Hi, my name is Tom. This is a tutorial on how to put together your blue barrel rainwater catchment system. I ordered a four barrel system off of one downspout from, from Blue Barrel and uh, comes with a bunch of literature, um, stickers for non potable water, and then all the different parts you'll need, as well as the uh, plugs for your barrels, um, sealant, glue, hose. I, I did get a bung uh, wrench, just thought that would be helpful. Um, and I bought a, a 7 8 inch drill bit um, because I didn't have one. Um, I'm going to walk through, these are all the, the supplies you'll need. In addition to the supplies, you'll need um, about 12 feet of 3 quarter inch Schedule 40 plastic PVZ pipe, which I have over here. Um, and it uh, depends on how many barrels you have, but for a four barrel, I need about 12 feet. I'm going to make a little extension for my spigot and so forth. So got maybe a couple extra feet, but that should be good to go. The first thing I'm doing is uh, you want all your barrels and the cinder blocks they sit on to be at 24 foot, or excuse me, 24 inch centers. And so I just laid out my, uh, my cinder blocks at about 24 inches width and from center to center apart. And why you do that is, um, you'll find out, but all of your piping goes in that channel um, in the center of those cinder blocks um, once the barrels are inverted upside down and your pipe is done. So this is a very visual representation of what my base for the system will be. I have my barrels up on my cinder blocks. Now, um, when the final installation is completed, they'll actually be rotated 180 degrees because all my piping will be through the bung holes at what is the top of the barrel now. We'll roll all the barrels over, reestablish the piping through that center channel of cinder blocks, and uh, uh, we'll be ready to go. But I'm gonna build it here in my garage just because it's easier to do. First thing as I did is uh, set up my cinder blocks, uh, put my barrels as they'll sit um, as a four barrel system, and then I drilled inch and sixteenth inch holes approximately the same spot of each barrel. Now what those holes are for is uh, these little screens. This is your vent screen. So as your system fills up, there's some way to vent the air that the water's pushing out. We're not gonna put those vents in yet. That'll be one of the last things we do. But I wanted to get these holes done and out of the way. I'm gonna take a little utility knife, clean up some of the plastic that I have here, just to make them cleaned up. Try to, when you drill, not to deposit a lot of plastic inside your barrel, because that's potential clogging. Not a big deal if a bit gets through, but just don't you know, go up and down and drop a bunch of plastic in your barrel, because that probably will present problems at some point in the future, particularly if you're using uh, a bubbler or a drip system. You can take apart the uh, drainage system um, and reinstall it at, at, at the location that it'll, it'll ultimately be in, which is my backyard next to my garden. So again, very visual presentation on how this will look as I'm building. So now I'm um, putting in my closed bungs and my TN bungs. And the difference, if you can see here, this has a solid hole here. So that's your closed bung. That's where your TN pipe will not go. This is your TN bung, and if you can see, it's 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 a hose fitting um, right there, and that's what your fit, your fittings from Blue Barrel will fit into. And the opposite side of this system, way down there, that's going to be where my spigot is, um, where my outflow comes from. So what I'm planning to do then is my bung hole farthest away is closed, and then TN closed then TN, closed, then TN, closed, then TN. So every other is a TN, the other, is, the other bung hole is just closed and sealed forever. I'm gonna go ahead and drill these out with a 7 8 inch drill. You can see the threads there. I'm gonna drill perfectly center so I can have an opening for my water to come in from my spout and fill the barrels up. So again, super easy. Have this TN bung. I'm gonna hold it tight, it'll spin, drill it on a nice wood surface, and that's all it takes. So that's how you drill your holes out, super easy. Next up, this is some pipe thread that uh, Bluebell sends in the kit, 
And these are the closed end caps. So not the drilled, but the closed end, the ones that'll be there forever. And I'm gonna run this uh, Teflon pipe tape with the thread so when I screw it in, it doesn't peel it back, but with the thread five, six times around to get this thread ready to seal. And we'll throw these caps in the bung holes. Next, I'm gonna take my Teflon tape threaded closed bung. And I'm gonna take, this is some silicone that's included in your kit. And I'm gonna run it right along the edge here. What this does is if there's any loose air pockets or anything like that, it'll, it'll seal it. So I'm gonna come in here and so I don't cross thread it, I'm gonna hand start that bung in my hole, get it tight, and I'm gonna come in with my bung wrench and really tighten it up. Nice and tight. You can feel it starting to set in there. And I'm gonna keep going until I can't go anymore. Make sure that seal is nice and tight there. Okay, so that's one. I'll do four more barrels and then we'll get started on the threaded sides. On the TN caps, the caps where your, your pipes will go, I'm gonna run a bead of silicone right on the edge there. And what that'll do is fill in any air gaps. And I'm gonna tighten these caps down now too. So again, the silicone you got from Blue Barrel will run right on the, the edge nice thick bead right along the edge and tighten those caps in as well. I have uh, my TN where my pipes go. I did run some additional caulk around that seal once I had the bung tight. And I have my plugs on each barrel aligned so that we have my, my TNs on the left and my closed on the right on all four barrels. Okay, next we start laying out pipe. This is what my T out assemblies look like for each barrel. Um, I have a T at the bottom, two and a quarter inch piece of pipe here going to the coupling, two and a half, two and a quarter inch piece of pipe here, and then the male threaded end that will go into my, my, uh, my T, T bung. So the, the important thing is that once it's assembled, I haven't glued this yet, but once it's assembled, you can see it's about, oh, seven inches. Now your cinder blocks are eight inches. So you want to keep it up at least an inch between six and seven inches up so your pipe's not resting on the ground. So I went, mine are about six and a half with that two and a quarter, two and a quarter, the coupling, the male threaded, and the T. So I'm going to make four more of those and then we'll start assembling the cross pieces that will join the barrels to each other. What I've done with these two and a quarter inch pieces, I just marked two and a quarter inches on my Schedule 40 PVC pipe. And I have a little dove saw, which is just plenty all you need. So I'm just gonna start it. And cut my two and a quarter inch pieces. Need a total of eight of them for a four barrel system. And you'll notice You leave a little plastic residue here. And what, I, what I'll do, I'm gonna actually take a little utility knife and, and trim this out, just so there's no catches in there, no breakage, that, no, no plastic that'll go in to clog my, uh, my planned drip lines. Um, but even if this cuts aren't square, that's fine. You're going in about that far with PVC glue. Um, so need eight pieces just like that one. 
Okay, I'm in here. You can see the the uh, plastic debris from my cuts. Now I'm just going to run my knife inside and out, get it cleaned up, and that's perfect. There we go. So that's how all my eight pieces should look like. Nice and clean, ready to start gluing. So we're gonna get ready to glue. Um, again, T, two and a quarter, coupling, two and a quarter, and your male threaded that goes into your threaded, uh, your threaded bung uh, cap. So how I'm gonna put these on though, this is kind of important, is you want your threaded female end on the bottom, so towards the T. So when you come up into your pipe, it's just a simple tighten, just like that. And that's how you'll take it apart uh, when you winterize, if you're in a climate where you freeze, you can just pull your pipe assembly off, stick it in the basement or the garage, place warm, and let everything just go for the winter. Simply hook each connection back up the following spring when you're ready to collect water. One thing you want to do um, before gluing all your pipe together is make sure you use your silicone tape on these threaded male ends. Again, five, six times around with the thread before you screw them in. And I'm, that's what I'm doing now. And then I'll glue all my pipe together and join everything back up and let it dry. done all my pipe cutting everything's just dry fit together um, and I just loosely placed the uh, the threaded male ends into my bung holes just so I could place everything out um, this will be my drop imagine it it's all upside down now so this will be my drop to fill up my water buckets for my hand watering I have the uh, shutoff valve that isolates the two barrels on either side of the system so I have that installed. Um, and then this is my drip system. So I'm just coming off the bottom. I have a little 100 micron filter with some drip line that'll come off of here uh, with a small valve for that also. So again, just dry fit. I wanted to see how it'd look. Um, you notice all my piping's coming down in between the, in between the barrels so that I'm able to uh, not only protect it from getting knocked by knees or garden equipment, but also I can reach it easily once it's upside down and it'll be right in between the cinder blocks like this, okay? So I'm gonna glue this system together and uh, let it dry and then we'll be able to go outside and hook up our, uh, our downspout. Now if you noticed on this end, I did a little tee off here. If I wanna add more barrels, that enables me to cut this and just continue adding barrels. So if I wanna add to my system, this enables me to do that. And uh, same thing on this side, because I have a side spout, you could actually take this T out and not have it and come out the side, but I just thought that was such a great place for me to knock it with my knee and break pipe that I wanted to hide uh, my, my uh, hand uh, watering can faucet in a place that was uh, not, so, not so dangerous for me to knock it off at some point in the future. So I'm gonna glue this stuff together. I think the key here is to make sure that your pipes I'm going to use a level, so when I glue it, I'm going to level everything off and probably use some sort of brace as it dries just so it doesn't pull it and, and create a, a, a bad angle in my pipe. But uh, we're ready to roll. I'm going to glue this up and then we'll get the system set up outside. Okay, we're going to start gluing. I'm just going to, just because I'm a bit anal, I'm going to clean off, get some of my hand grease off some of these, these, oops, these pipes that I cut. Um, just to make sure the glue has a, its optimum chance to, to bond. I'm going to come in. Now remember, don't glue like this because it could drip down in your threads. So glue up. And I'm going to rest this. Go to this end. And ultimately what I'd like to get is an insert and about a quarter of a turn to set that glue. Okay. So I'm going to let that one rest. 
come in, same thing, this one, and then inside the T, insert, quarter of a turn, let it rest. Okay, I'm gonna let that sit just for a sec as I pull apart my coupling. Coupling, I'm gonna come in, glue the coupling, glue the end, come in with a quarter turn, and let it rest. Same thing on this side. Glue the joint, glue the pipe, come in, quarter of a turn, and let it rest. Okay, so I'm gonna let those two rest. That one's first one's down, and uh, we'll start on the other three. Okay, before I start gluing my PVC pipe all together, what I ended up doing was running a bunch of the uh, silicone around these pieces. This is a potential weak spot in my mind in regard to leakage. So I, I took it, all four of my, my uh, tee outs from the bottom of the water barrel and just ran a bunch of uh, uh, silicone caulk on there um, just to prevent any potential leaks you know, in, in the future at some point. I have uh, my pipes all glued up and in place. Nice straight line. And my elbows coming out are nice and level. I have my shutoff valve at the center of my, uh, my four barrel system, so at the second and third barrel. Um, now what I'm gonna do is just uh, put some tape on this nozzle, which will be for my drip system. And then this nozzle, which will be for my bucket fill system. So once that's done, we'll disassemble, get everything outside, and rotate the barrels 180 degrees. So the pipes on the bottom, on top of the cinder blocks. And we'll start getting it set up, and at some point today, join into uh, the downspout. I have my cinder blocks set up, which I, I think they're in the spot is what I want them. Um, 24 inches uh, outside to outside and center on center. Um, eight blocks for four barrels. Not super excited about putting them on this wooden deck, although this deck is built on top of a concrete slab. Um, a lot of weight, you know, each barrel will weigh about 450 pounds when it's full, so there's a ton of weight right there. I'm out here, have my barrels out. One of the things I did do is, if you can see here, I put a one and a one. So I wanted to, probably a little bit much, but I wanted to match my barrels with my fittings. Um, just so if there's any irregularities with distance, things like that, I know what's going on. So I numbered all four barrels um, and then the, the connection joint, uh, the T-joint that goes down to the barrel. Um, so I'm gonna take these barrels, take my pipe off, then flip the barrels over um, actually I'll probably put the pipe in first um, just so I don't have to try to feed it in with all the stuff hanging out and then I'll put the barrels down and then we'll join everything up I have my barrels upside down now in the proper position my P schedule 40 PVZ pipe uh, is resting on the deck itself and we're just gonna start hooking things up so this coupler I'm gonna come in place it at the bottom and I'm just going to do them hand tight because I know I'm going to have to adjust my barrels and maybe even the pipe just a little bit so that all the connections fit. Um, so I'm hand tight on the first one. I have three more to go. I'll make sure everything's in a line and where I like it and uh, then we'll tighten everything up. I have everything in place and what's, what's pretty awesome, I'm about two inches up off the deck um, on top of those cinder blocks. That's perfect. Is that where I wanted it? This is my spout for my, my bucket filler. Might be a little high. I can always adjust that. And then for my drip line, I have right here. So we're all set. I like how the blocks are set. Um, looks like the barrels are very supported. A little bit of wiggle room in between each barrel. You can see my center valve right here. That's my isolation valve that'll cut the system down to the two barrel. Um, so everything looks like it's good. So next we're gonna shoot into, uh, into this downspout. It's a two by three downspout. And we're gonna shoot about kind of level. 
Got to work around that pipe, but that's okay. That'll give me a little support to, so that that hose doesn't sag. Um, but that's the next piece of our project. The only mistake I made, which is just an aesthetic one, is you can see the hole for the, the screen filter is there. And on the other three, they're in the back. And that kind of bothers me because I like to have everything in line. But for whatever reason, this is the oddball. So we'll go from there. But uh, next up, we're going for the downspout. I have a uh, inch and a half hole saw, which is the size I need for my insert into my barrel wall. I'm going to try to play off of this curve a little bit. So I'm going to come in about... Oh, two inches down from the top of the barrel and that that'll be the total fill line for all barrels then so I'm gonna come in in here and then we'll do a uh, two and an eighth inch hole saw about level so that when that hose line fills up it diverts your water back down your downspout so let's do the first hole and uh, into the barrel in the inch and a half and we'll go from there okay as you can see I have my uh, hole in my barrel wall I've inserted the rubber grommet here, um, so we're ready to accept the hole into the, uh, the downspout, and we should be good to go. So I had to do one thing before I, before I drilled a hole in my downspout. I want to make sure that my mark is about level. That'll be the bottom of my hole over to the hole over here. So we want that line level. So that the, uh, when the barrels do fill up, the water has the ability to continue down the downspout instead of overfilling the barrels and then, then, then coming out of your, uh, your vent holes. So mark my level and away I go. Okay, got the hole in my downspout and then this is a very pliable piece of rubber and it'll slip right inside and then I'll secure it with two screws. Okay, I have my diverter installed and screwed in place. My fill hole with the uh, grommet into the first barrel. And uh, what I'm going to do next is put this netting over the end of the diverter hose and run it to the barrel. And we're done. So I have my little screen mesh into the diverter through the diverter hose and into the first barrel. And you can see my tools that I use, just basically a couple different drills, three different hole saws, and, uh, and away we go. Last thing we're gonna do is put in the, the uh, drain screens so bugs and debris don't get in, and we're ready to collect water. Our barrel system is done. Again, have a little butt in there just in case I ever want to open it up for whatever reason. My water bucket filling station. My bubbler system. And then the isolation valve between the two uh, sets of barrels. And have my, got the screens in. They just popped right in. No problems there. Um, the fill hose here I don't think I'll get sag on it. It's nice and level, um, but I may, you know, attach something here just to hold it. So it, if after it ages, it doesn't go like that and start blocking water. I'm not sure. We'll see how that plays out. Um, nice screen there to catch any debris. I do have gutter guards on, on my gutters up there. So I shouldn't get a lot of debris, but this will most definitely help and keep some material out of, uh, out of the way. My valves, two drain valves are shut. My isolation valve is open, so I can fill all barrels, and now we wait for rain. So that's the barrel system. Um, it really took probably three hours, three and a half hours to do um, with the videoing and so forth. Um, it was my first time doing this. Instructions are very easy. Um, I ended up using about, I bought 15 feet of the Schedule 40 PVZ pipe, um, and I ended up using about 11 feet, um, primarily because of my, my, my barrel fill valve there, um, or my, my water bucket fill valve. Uh, so you could probably do it with 10 feet, um, but a little bit extra, you know, it costs about 30 cents a foot, so who cares, right? So this is it, um, and we'll see how we do. Thank you.